All right, in this video, we're going to briefly talk about absolute value. Um, so most people encounter this notion of absolute value at some point in, in high school, right? Um, so the, the absolute value, the notation, is a couple of vertical bars, right? So we'd write this as absolute value of x, where x is some real number. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, there, there's a number of ways of interpreting absolute value. One of the simplest ways is to think of this as distance, right? Um, you can think of this as the distance from zero. Zero is kind of this, this touchstone on the real number line, right? It's, this, it's, it's in the middle. It's this reference point. It's the distance from zero to x. That's one way of describing it. Okay, so let's think of that number line, right? Here's our number line. Okay. There it is. We've got to mark zero. Where is zero? Somewhere here in the middle. Okay. So you choose any other number, and you think about how far away from zero it is. So let's say I choose a number out here, like, I don't know, 29. Okay? That's my number. So what's the distance from zero to 29, right? Well, we measured distance using real numbers, right? Uh, the distance from zero to 29 is simply 29. Fair enough, right? And in fact, in general, if x is bigger than 0, then the absolute value of x is just x. Right? Actually, we can do one better. Um, what's the distance from 0 to 0? Well, 0 is a distance of zero from itself, right? Any number is a distance of zero from itself. So we can actually say that if x is bigger than or equal to zero, the absolute value of x is just x. Okay. Uh, now, what if we wanted the distance from zero to, I don't know, minus, minus 17, okay? Minus 17.5, why not? Throw a decimal in. Uh, how far away are they? Well, The distance is, is going to be, again, it's going to be the number, right? The distance from zero to any number is that number, except we never want distance to be negative, right? So if we, if we throw a negative number in and we want to give the distance, just remove the minus sign, okay? So absolute value of negative 17.5 is positive 17.5, right? So. What that tells me is that if x is less than 0, the absolute value of x is. Now, this will throw some people off, right? Um, how do I get 17.5 from minus 17.5? Well, I throw away the minus sign. How do I get rid of the minus sign? Well, um, one of these basic algebra rules that you learn somewhere along the way is that if you take the negative of a negative, it becomes positive, right? So the way to get a positive number from a negative number is to put a minus sign out front. Okay, Some people get thrown off by this because they see that minus sign, and, and every time you see a minus sign, you think negative. So like, wait a sec. Absolute value is supposed to be positive, but over here, there's, this looks like a negative number. But it's not, right? Because x, I mean, x here is just some variable, or it could be any real number. And real numbers can be negative. So if this happens to be a negative real number and you put a minus sign out front, it's going to become positive. So even though there's a minus sign there, the number might still be positive if the number you started with is negative. Okay? So this is a simple way of thinking about it, right? It's just distance, right? And, and you can generalize this, you know, if you wanted to talk about the distance from, let's say, A to B, where A and B are just real numbers, well, what's that going to be? 
So if you want to think about how far apart two numbers are, you should take their difference, right? The difference of two numbers tells you how far apart they are. The problem is I didn't say here that A was, you know, bigger or smaller than B, right? I don't know. A might be bigger than B, might be smaller than B. Depending on which of these two numbers is bigger, this difference could be positive or negative. And the way you get around that is you just slap absolute values on it, right? As long as you take the absolute value, it's going to be a positive number, okay? So that's the, the basic idea of absolute value is it just guarantees that everything is positive, right? Um, you can think in terms of, of the graph, if you like. We'll be doing a lot of graphing as we move forward, okay? Um, so what these two tell me here is that for positive values of x, absolute value of x is just x, right? So if I'm, if I'm graphing, if I'm doing the graph y equals absolute value of x, when x is bigger than 0, we just graph y equals x. When x is smaller than 0, we graph y equals minus x, right? And you'll, you can see from the graph that it never drops below the y-axis, or the, below the x-axis, right? It's always positive. Um, so which, which, of course, we understood because we defined this thing as a distance. It should never be negative. Distances aren't negative. Um, so this is, um, these are some basic ideas around absolute value. By the way, um, this type of function that is given by one formula in one region and a different formula in another region, um, this, is, uh, this is what's known as a piecewise function. Right? So what this tells me is that absolute value of x is so-called, it's piecewise, All right? Or, or you might see this uh, as piecewise defined. Sometimes to shorten things, we just say piecewise, or, or we might be more precise and say piecewise defined, right? So it's defined in pieces, right? This piece is defined one way, this piece is defined another way, okay? So of course, if you wanted to graph something like that, well, you just draw the graphs of the appropriate pieces on the appropriate intervals, right? bigger than zero or less than zero in this case, and you've got your picture. Uh, we'll be seeing plenty of piecewise defined functions later on once we move to talking about limits and continuity.